We are very fortunate at the BYU Library to have so many tools to preserve and enhance our photos and slides, as well as having scanners to scan our slides, negatives, and photos to bring to life our histories. We have software on all the computers to enhance our photos. Albeit many of the scanners have built-in photo enhancement technologies, there are times when our custom enhancements might produce results more to our liking. One of the most powerful pieces of software for enhancing photos is Photoshop, which is on all the computers here. There are simple ways to use this very complex program on your scans that will make a huge difference in the quality of your scans. In today's presentation, we will talk about three of these enhancement features in Photoshop. Levels, color balance, and cropping. If the Photoshop program icon does not appear in the Start menu when you click on Start or in the Quick Start toolbar at the bottom of your screen, you might try this technique. Click on Start. In the input box at the bottom where it says Search Programs and Files, type in Photoshop. From one of the options in the Programs category, click on the Photoshop program to open it. If you want the program more accessible for the next time, click on the icon and drag it to the Quick Start toolbar at the bottom of the screen. The first Photoshop adjustment feature we will talk about is working with the Levels adjustment. To open the Levels panel in Photoshop, Select Image on the main menu bar, then select Adjustments, and then select Levels. You can do this or use the Quick Key, which is Control L. Using the Levels panel in Photoshop gives us a precise way of controlling the brightness and contrast of a picture. Opening the Levels panel brings up a histogram or a graph of the photo. The black area represents the pixels that make up the photo. The left side of the graph represents the dark portions of the photo. The right side of the graph represents the highlights and the midtones are represented in the middle of the graph. For adjustment purposes, there are three sliders below the graph that you will move to adjust the quality of your photo. A good quality photo has a histogram such as this that is spread out from the left sl slider to the right slider with very little flat space on the inside of the end sliders. The slider on the left, or the dark triangle, is the shadow slider. The slider in the center, or the gray tri uh, triangle, is the midtone slider. The slider on the white right, or the white triangle, is the highlight slider. Before you make your adjustments, Make sure the preview checkbox is checked so you can see the effect of your adjustment on your photos as you move the sliders. You can see this is a poor quality picture as there is no part of the black area above the mid-tone and highlight sliders. Most of the information is between the mid-tone and dark slider, thus you can see the actual photo on the left is very dark. Poor quality pictures can be adjusted so they are very acceptable and recognizable. Let's see what happens to the photo when we move the mid-tone and highlight sliders so they fall below the black histogram. Again, this technique works both with black and white photos and with color, color photos. There are some more things you can do with color photos in the Levels panel, but just this one technique will make a huge difference. To adjust the levels and fix brightness contrast problems with this photo, we first make sure the preview checkbox is checked so that we can see the effect of our adjustments as we go. Then we move the shadow slider a little to the right just to the edge of the histogram. We move the highlight slider way to the left to the edge of the flat space and the edge of the histogram and then we move the mid-tone slider back and forth until the picture looks just right to you. Now without much effort we have a very recognizable photo. Second Photoshop feature that we will discuss for enhancing photos is working with the color balance adjustment. 
To open the color balance adjustment panel, select image on the main menu bar, then select adjustment, then select color balance. Or you can use the keystroke shortcut control B. The following three settings are usually in the correct um, position by default, but you may want to make sure. The first one is the preview button, so when it's checked you can see the results of your adjustment on the picture as you make it. The second one is you can choose to adjust the color balance in either the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights, and it's usually best to select the midtones. And the third one is the preserve luminosity uh, checkbox, and it's usually best to check this box. So this will then modify the colors, but not the brightness and the contrast of the tones. If you're unhappy with this result, you can try deselecting that option. There are three color balance sliders, and as you move the triangle to the right, it increases the amount of that color and decreases the amount of the color on the other end of the slider. So as you move the um, top bar slider to the right, it increases red and decreases cyan. So for instance, if your photo had too much blue in it, you would move it to the left and it would increase the yellow. Once you get that main color adjustment done, you can play with the other two sliders and see what effect you like. Let's see what effect adjusting the color balance had on the wedding photo shown in the previous slide. The first picture here shows that slide which has too much yellow. So in the second picture you see what effect it had when we adjusted the color balance by decreasing the yellow, which increased the blue, and increased the red just a teeny bit. You can see the effect was an improvement as the dress and the coat seemed to be much whiter. Here's another example. This photo contained too much magenta, so using the color balance adjustment, the amount of magenta was reduced by moving that slider to the right and you can see the results in the photo to the, on the right side. The Crop Tool is the last Photoshop feature that we will discuss. It helps us prepare photos to print using precise portions of the photo. The Crop Tool looks the same in most applications. It's the fourth tool down on the Photoshop toolbar on the left side. Once you select the crop tool, parameters for the crop tool appear at the top left just under the main menu bar. There are boxes to insert the desired values for your crop. Width and height, which can either be in pixels or inches, the default is inches. Pixels per inch, which is the resolution, 300 pixels per inch is a good resolution for printing. Once you are done cropping your tool, if you click on the clear box, the boxes will empty out and you can enter new parameters for your next crop. Once the crop tool is selected, you can enter values for the size and the resolution of your crop if you want to in the parameters bar at the top left. For the width and the height, the default uh, measurement is in inches. If you want it to be in pixels, type PX after the value you have entered. Once the crop tool is selected, drag the portion of the picture from the upper left to the lower right. The area not in the crop will darken and the crop area will retain the original brightness. Once the crop is delineated, you can reposition it by moving the cursor to the edge of the image until the cursor becomes an arrow. You then click in the crop area and move it around if you desire. If you want to rotate the crop, move the cursor outside the crop to one of the corners until it turns into a, a quarter circle with arrows at the end. 
you click the mouse and drag to the desired rotation. Once your crop has been delineated, you can resize the crop by moving the cursor to one of the square markers on either the sides or the corner of the crop until the cursor turns into a line with arrows on both ends. Then click down, hold the mouse, and drag to the desired size. By holding the shift key down as you drag, you maintain the proportions of the original crop. Once your crop is acceptable, or if you want to cancel it, right-click within the center of the crop and a, a box will come up which will allow you to either choose to cancel the crop or to crop it. Have fun and give Photoshop a try. Enhance your photos and make them a part of your family histories.